What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gym Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, uh, there have been... S- you sent me some uh, uh, text about the Ray movie and her film being the movie that will start the Jedi Order again, right? The Jedi Academy. Right. What are the latest rumors uh, re- surrounding that? And uh, and you also says test of Iger, something about Iger. That's 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 still cr- that's cryptic right there. I gotta find some cryptic music. <laughs> what what's going on there in that world? Okay, <laughs> let's see. November 29th, two thousand twenty three. Bob Iger at the Deal Summit says creators lost sight of what their priority needs to be. Our top priority is entertainment, not messaging. End quote. CEO okay. of Disney. January 2nd, 2024, piece on Variety. Charmaine Obeyed Chinoy, who is the director of the Star Wars movie starring Daisy Ridley, quote, I'm very thrilled about the project because I feel what we're about to create is something very special. We are in 2024 now, and it's about time we had a woman come forward to shape a story in a galaxy far, far away. This past week, Pablo, rumors on the internet. Charmaine Obeyed Chinoy fired from the movie. Oh, snap. Okay. So, that rumor has been denied for the moment, so it's unconfirmed. Please take with the appropriate grain of salt. However, with the timeline I just laid out for you, did Bob Iger issue Order 66 (laughs) on Kathleen Kennedy's maybe renegade Star Wars project? There's a power struggle. Whatever's in that vault is going to probably come out. (laughs) (laughs) She's going to be like, don't make me do it. (laughs) I'm telling you, uh, man, it could get ugly, Brian. What are your thoughts? What do you think? I give you that sequence of events. And yes, I'm, I'm speculating. I am definitely speculating on that. Because if I'm being fair to Charmaine's quote, that doesn't necessarily scream messages over entertainment. It doesn't, if I'm being fair. Mm -hmm. But in this hypersensitive world we live in, people, there's definitely people in the online community that latched onto that as like a warning sign that she's coming to shake things up in a very sort of pro-feminist or whatever direction you want to think about. And then you got Mm -hmm. Daisy Ridley saying, I think her quote about the story was, wow, it's different, but it's really cool or really effing cool, I think was her quote. Means nothing. And I'm just saying you got the CEO of the company a month prior laying down the new law of how he sees the priorities for all the projects. A month later, you've got the director for this Star Wars movie, which Kathleen Kennedy told us at the time, which you know we know what that means, but told us at the time would be the first Star Wars movie we'd get since Rise of Skywalker. She brings Daisy Ridley on stage for the big, big hurrah. Director gets quoted making this statement, and now you got rumors a month later that she may have been shuffled off the project. Again, unconfirmed. But if they do make a director's change, to me, how can we at least not connect a few of those dots and say there was an issue with the style of story that they were intending to tell versus Iger's new mandate about what he wants to see? Is... Star Wars at a tipping point, Brian, where is one of those that might go dormant for some time in order to get back to its winning ways. Because right now, as of late, in terms of the movies, they haven't been winning. Hence our talk regarding the Mando film and what their... uh, I guess prioritizations are in terms of getting money because that's where it's at. Do you think if this Ray movie gets off the ground and it gets destroyed, is it not the end of the movie, but a cer- but certainly, again, a, a Star Wars may go on a, a hiatus as a, a la after Return of the Jedi. So, here, let me let me pi- I'm going to pivot that question because I think it's a it's the right question. Is there a scenario where this movie can actually succeed now? So here's my question is, are we at a place where the toxicity around this kind of debate is to a point where 
this movie is already dead on arrival. Because you eat, if they stick with the vision that is being worked on behind the scenes, the one that Daisy Ridley likes, the one that she came back for, isn't there already now this fear and perception that, oh, this is another one of those projects, the ones that people have come out against or boycotted at the box office that Disney has put out in the past year? So there's that side of it. If they change everything out, is there a stain on this already to where like people are like, I, I, I'll give me something else. Give me Mando Grogu. Give, give me some. That's my question because this is these types of movies obviously carry very large budgets. And for Iger to buy into, you know, again, if we want to rope in another one of his quotes, you know, he doesn't want to see sequels unless there's a justification. And this is most definitely a sequel. Like, I, I'm struggling. It almost feels like this movie is. It's like starting a hundred meter dash 20 meters behind the starting line. That's what it kind of feels like. Have you given any thought as to what type of movie would be a successful one starring Ray? And yeah, well, this look, it, story it, of the it basically Jedi would be the Luke Skywalker Jedi Academy movie, but just with like that they've shown, they've written about in the novels and they've shown in the video games, but you just have Ray run it instead of Luke. I mean, that's, I mean, that's a pretty quintessential Star Wars lore type of story. But I'm just saying when people, re if people are overreacting to Charmin's quote, the way that they seem to be, and now there's rumors they might be changing her out as director, that to me is already speaking of at least some kind of tension that like the their version of the Jedi Academy or the Jedi Order movie is not that, not the, not the one that fans would probably welcome on some level to see in some form. So that's... And I guess you run the risk that, like, if they do it that way, people are like, well, wh why don't you just get Sebastian Stan to do Luke and do it with him? Like, why is Ray the one? Why is Ray got to be the one that does this when we couldn't, you know? Like, I mean, I guess I'd still go see it if it was good. I mean, I, I don't want to mm. hold that against the movie, but. I'm just not interested right now in a Ray led film, Brian. I'm more interested in uh, seeing that Jedi Academy done with. Luke Skywalker starring Sebastian Stan. We already got the okays from everybody. We don't need to, you know, not think about that. And then from that, Brian, let that future of the Star Wars film be explored. But you know my main complaint with this, and if I was Iger, what I would, the questions I would be asking would be, why does anything from the last trilogy need to be brought forward? The audience rejected Rise of Skywalker. But are you saying then that these movies don't exist and Ray doesn't exist then? No, I'm not saying that. But I'm saying okay. why do we need to put into production further movies along that particular storyline? That's what I would argue. Because if we barely made money on Rise of Skywalker, if at all, why would a Ray sequel to that trilogy really cause a huge buzz? Like to me, the James Mangold Force origin story yeah. is far more interesting because it's at least somewhere else in the universe that we haven't seen. Let's yes. go play over there. Audiences yeah. don't have the same stigmas, the same biases, the same prejudices, quite honestly, that they had with the Skywalker saga. That, that's what Star Wars to me is handcuffed by. They're handcuffed yeah. by the Skywalker family. They can't run, they can't run from it. And so yeah. a, a, to me, a Ray when she calls herself Ray Skywalker at the end of Rise of Skywalker, you're basically just telling the next Skywalker story. And uh, and that is based on a lie. Right. Because <laughs> she is not a Skywalker. Although apparently Luke and Leia still look in on her, so they buy into the lie, according to the Force ghosts. But, I, you know, that that's my thing with it. It's like, when you talk about Star... This is where I bring... With Star Wars hiatus. I think Star Wars is at the is at the precipice. It's already been on hiatus longer yeah. than Disney would have wanted. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think we're on the verge of a more, you know, Star Trekian type of hiatus where it's like, does this franchise work on the big screen anymore? Because if you if all you can tell is Skywalker stories, it, it can't go on forever. It was never meant to go on forever. So the true test will be uh Mando's movie. It, so exactly. Because to me, the TV universe has been, by and large, successful. Now, Mando season three was not really well received. But if they can't translate the known quantities of the Filoni verse into anything on the big screen, then what do they have? They don't have anything. Yeah. Which could be good if you waited long enough and then maybe did like the Force origin story or did an Andor-esque you... type of story on the big screen. 
You got to do the. I think if you want to start from the beginning, go back to the beginning. Jedi, that that man, James Mangold film, understanding what that Jedi, what the Jedi Order is, where it comes from, that history, to then move to the towards the future. And who knows, right? Who knows what stories that can be told? But certainly, it won't be so associated with the Skywalkers. It is just okay. That's it. But here's here's another thing, Brian, that I'm a bit concerned of, and I think we spoke about it previously, but I'll mention it again. Dave Filoni's vision and style, Brian, edges on the verge of a live action cartoon, and we have to, or he has to be very careful with how he makes the Jedi look because how it looked in Ashoka, certainly there were some instances in, instances of great cinematography and, 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 and great sequences, but certainly there was that uh, feeling of, of I'm watching an animation that's live action sort of feel to it when it came to the to the Jedi, you know. So I agree completely. I think all of his all of these series from Mandalorian on down, there are moments where you can imagine certain scenes being cinematic, and there's moments where you're like, I really know the volume is doing the work here, and yeah. it's very TV. And yeah. you would presume that if it's a feature film, they would be less reliant on the. It's also why Andor looked so good because it was shot on location, location. throughout. And you would figure that in a movie, Filoni would be empowered and would want to do that. If he does 90% of the shooting in the volume, I would be skeptical as yeah. to the quality we're going to get. Uh, By the way, your, your, your Mangold thing. I don't know if you saw this, but in the annals of Kathy Kennedy, you know what the irony of the James Mangold project getting at least approved preliminarily is? Do you see that Benioff and Weiss finally told us what they pitched to her that she rejected? No, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> so Benioff and Weiss, our Game of Thrones creators, who are back with House of the Dragon, finally went public with what they brought when they were hired to do a trilogy that then was scrapped. And they, the, the joke they said was, Ryan Johnson stole our thunder because our project was titled The First Jedi. So how is that different than what James Mangold pitched? Isn't the first Jedi and the Force origin basically the same thing? Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Kathy Kennedy spent that money and that time and negged the first two guys and said yes to Mangold on basically the same idea years later? Yeah. Confused. Makes no sense. Let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of the possibility of a Ray movie. Are you excited? And do you think it can work now that there's already been this kind of noise around the project? And what is in that vault? <laughs> you gotta... Because <laughs> she is not going anywhere. But yeah, let us know in the comments below what you guys think. Would this work in the Star Wars universe in terms of what they are trying to get back to? Because as of late, there's just a lot of... I don't know. Not a lot of feeling of super excitement, Brian. I don't know. It's just so it's not a feeling of I don't know, man. As of late, Disney has just been a disappointment. Let us know in the comments below what you guys think, and we'll see you next time. Hit that like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time on the Nerd Gen Report. The show goes on!